Hi, welcome to part 8 of Circle Jump, the Godot mobile game development series. In this installment, we're going to talk about implementing a difficulty curve, making the game get more and more challenging the farther you progress. To begin, we're going to use the level to determine what type of circles are spawned. So in the main script here, when we initialize the circle, we're going to pass the level. And then on the circle script, instead of passing in these things, we're just going to pass in level with a default value of 1. And that's going to determine what type of circles, whether it's moving, all that kind of stuff. Now to set the mode, we're going to want to randomly choose between static and limited, or other ones when we add more. But I want them to be weighted. I want it to be much more likely to pick static early on. In fact, it should be a 100% chance of picking static at level one. But then as you get to higher and higher levels, limited becomes more often. And so we want a weighted random number. And to do a weighted random number, we need a we need to define some weights. So the mode, the way we would define the weights would be something like this, for example. This is just an example. But so I have a 10 to 1 chance of choosing static over limited. So the total number of chances here is 11. So 10 out of those 11 will be static. 1 out of those 11 would be limited. And to choose a, a weighted method like this, we need a function. I'm going to put that in settings. We're just going to make a static function for this. So you pass it an array of weights, and it's going to return to you which one it picked. So the first thing you do is you need to sum up the weights. So now we have a sum of weights. We're going to pick a random number between that range. And then we go through each of the weights in the array, and that if our number we picked is less than that one we're on, then we're going to return that one we're on. But if it's not, then we will subtract it from num and try again, till we've re either picked one or reached the last one. This is a pretty common algorithm for choosing a weighted random number. And in case it's not clear or you haven't run into this before, let's consider our example one where our weights array was 10 comma 1. So we sum it up, the total is 11. So we pick a random number between 0 and 10. Let's say that we picked 7. It picked, or 7.328. You know, it's going to be some number 7. We go through each of the index indices of the weights, and is 7 less than the first weight? Well, the first weight was 10, so it is. So we would return 0. And so 0 is the first item, so we pick the first item. But let's say our random number was 10.4. Well, 10.4 is not less than the first item, which is 10. So we instead subtract 10. So 10.4 becomes 0.4. And then we compare it to the last, next one. Is 0.4 less than 1? Yes. So we're going to return index number 1. So now we can go back over to the circle. And here for our weights, we'll call settings.randweighted and pass it this array of weights. And I'm going to make the second one be level minus 1 because that way at level 1, we'll have a 0% chance of a limited circle appearing. Okay, so next we have the move range, which I'm going to want to have progressive as well, and the radius. I want them, as you get up in level, to start shrinking as well. So to set the move, we're going to have a chance. Move chance is going to be what the odds are that you will spawn a moving circle. And I'm going to make that level minus 10, and I'm going to clamp it between 0 and 9, and divide by 10. So that's going to give me a, 
a percentage chance, but for the first 10 levels, we'll have zero. So there won't be any moving circles the first 10 levels. And then once we have that move chance, we can just pick a random number. And if that number is less than the move chance, then we have a moving circle. And then we need to randomize the move range. And we also need to randomize the move speed. Because as you get higher and higher, they get more difficult, they might move faster. And the range should get larger. So to figure this out, there's a, there's a few different ways you can do it. And one way that uh, I like to do it is to use a tool called Desmos. So Desmos is a graphing tool. And so here's a little formula I put in here to take x is the level. So I want it to be flat up to level 10, ramp up, and then cap out somewhere close to 1, or at you know, basically 0 0.95. Once you get to, oh, what is this? A level 29. And so you can play around with these numbers and see how it's going to change your curve. And obviously, this is going to take a lot of playtesting and, and experimentation to figure out what the best progression curve is. But these give us some starting points where we can, we have something to start with. So I've done that for the move range. I've picked a couple of formulas I think will work. Okay, so that gives us our move range. Just going to get smaller as the, or sorry, get larger as the level goes up, but has a, a minimum amount because we don't want it to a little vibration will look weird and then the move speed is also going to be based on the level and this is the amount of time for the tween to execute so it's a number of seconds so now we've set our move range and our move speed and the last one is going to be the size and this is also going to be a chance. We're going to have a chance that the circle will be smaller than average. And then if we do have it, then we will randomize the radius. And now to give me a way to test this out without having to play a successful game a whole bunch of times. I'm going to test it out by spawning a bunch of circles and I made a little uh, test scene to do that with. I'm not going to go too much through the script but what it does is spawns a hundred circles calling the same spawn circle code we use in main and then it just keeps track of some stuff so that I can scroll the camera up and down and see what level I'm on. So let's try it out and see what it looks like. So here is first sequence of circles getting to level two get to level three we get our first limited circle and hopefully as we go we should see more limited circles showing up right, they're becoming a little more common now we're at level 10 and then now we should soon, we should start seeing some moving circles appear. Oh, there's one with a little bit smaller radius. There's some moving one. There's a small one. So you see as we're going up, now we're getting more moving ones. All right, so this way we can test our progression and see if it's going the way we want it to go. And you know, I'm not intending for this to be balanced yet, just to be something that we can test out and adjust. Okay, and another bug that I noticed that I missed last time was when we were setting the colors, this is not doing anything because we have our line 2D using a gradient, so default color isn't used. So what we want to do with the player trail here is I'm going to stick it in a variable. 
and then on the gradient we need to say set color and we want the end color to be that then I'm going to take the trail color and set the alpha to zero for transparent I want to fade out and then and then trail dot gradient set color zero to that and that will do the trail correctly which you can see here since we're on a particular theme see the purple fading out okay well that'll do it for this part in the next installment we're going to look at some visual effects and maybe some particles start making uh, things look a little juicier All right, thanks for watching and i'll see you next time this tutorial is part of my new Godot Recipes website. The goal is to collect all the best tips and lessons to help make you a better Godot developer. If you like this video, I hope you'll go and check out the site. And make sure to hit subscribe so you'll be notified whenever I release new videos. Thanks for watching.